We've got an awesome lineup. Um, it's our first episode of 2021, and we are going to focus on one question, as you know. What does the modern media plan look like in 2021? Next, we have Molly Batten, Vice President of Global Brand Marketing for Delta Airlines. Molly leads global corporate brand strategy and management at Delta, where she and her team are responsible for portfolio marketing, agency management, cross-promotion planning, and media, among many other things. Welcome, Molly. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Hey, Gary, how are you? I'm well, Molly. How have you been? I'm doing all right, thanks. Good. Well, listen, I mean, there are very few industries that have been more affected than yours during this global pandemic. So A, how's the company doing? How are you doing? It must be super challenging. And I, and I obviously, because we have some mutual friends, I recall kind of pinging you when you first got the gig. And so you must have only been in place for a little over a year or somewhere in that range before this all hit. So before we even get into, and I'm actually, this this is the one I'm probably most excited about because I'd be dying to know how you're thinking about media planning with, I mean, wow, what a challenging thing. You know, I'm pretty good at intuition and guessing, but this one's out of my realm even, yeah. like when does it come back? Um, why don't you start with that? What's the opening rant to that energy? Yeah, no, Gary, it's been a fascinating year. Yeah, I think it was last year at CES we were trying to connect because um, I know um, you had done a lot of work with Turner where I was mm -hmm. before and mm -hmm. a lot of help um, as we were launching brands and shows. So um, it is great to see you again, Thank but you. Um, it has been a, a wild ride. So I've been yeah, at Delta for a little over a year. So I've seen our best day ever last year, profit sharing day, February 14th, and to kind of the worst day ever. So from the top to the bottom, and we just saw the the bottom fallout as many across the industry and the travel industry did um, in March and then just continued decline. And I will say it's been um, a fascinating learning process as we have had to rework and reinvent and re and innovate the airline from the inside out. Everything that we do um, by putting kind of our people and our customers front and center from how we sanitize and clean every flight before every flight, how we you know are still blocking the middle seat to make sure that our customers feel safe and comfortable when they travel, um, to partnerships with the Mayo Clinic and Lysol. Um, I know more about air filtration now than I ever would have thought I would have, um, you know, and just the airflow on the airplane. So it's been, you know, we've moved from really creating demand and talking about travel inspiration um, to really having to educate mm. um, our, our customers now. Travel is very different than it was last year. Um, and we know that as people are coming back, whether it's your first time or you've been back many times, there's more and different information that you need now. And that is really affecting how we think about media planning mm. um, into next year year because and, the, and, more, and even I'm sorry to interrupt and even more I would argue not importantly but equally as importantly the back to the creative messaging right Absolutely. Yeah. And so we, you know, really headline is we've moved from broad based kind of brand messaging to really audience first planning mm -hmm. and messaging because mm -hmm. we have such a segment. And, and you have plenty of awareness. I mean, there's not a person on this right now that does not know what Delta is. Right. So it's it's really about, you know, we, we elevate and we talk what our brand is about or we lead with our values. Our mission is no one better connects the world. But right now we have, as you look across the spectrum of the audiences, we've got, you know, folks who are not really ready to travel yet. So we have to have messaging that can connect with them of when you're ready, we're here for you and that travel inspiration to those that are hesitant and thinking about it. So how do we connect with them with targeted messages to let them know all the different things that we're doing to keep you safe when you travel um, and educate them on what travel's like to the people who are now traveling and how do we make sure that they're feeling good and connected and we keep pulling them back in. So it's really a, a very different messaging strategy that has led to a very different media strategy um, and focusing on those audiences and then identifying the right channels to hit them. Um, and and quick, a lot I of- I apologize real quick. Jason mm -hmm. Rorero says, stop interrupting Gary, Jesus. I just <laughs> wanna remind everybody, these are 10 minute meetings. I'm desperately trying to get as much information out to everybody. These are my homies and friends. And so I apologize, I get it, but I just wanna, it, it, and jump into Jason's comment and get a little more out of Molly. For example, Mom, Good. any new platforms where the media is going because of this initiative? Like, is this, do you have monies going into whether it's a TikTok or a LinkedIn or pre-roll YouTube or OTT, a Hulu, like any new, any interesting yeah. takes there? 
You know, I don't know so much new, but what I, what we've seen is the um, the increase in the impact of our social channels um, this past year has been critical. It's been a way for us to engage with our customers, um, leverage influencers, um, and really get our story across. Um, and my social team has just completely stepped up and is really using it to inspire our travelers. So we see stories about the, you know, um, the, 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 the flight attendant who took the time to take care of the passenger, these inspirational, heartwarming stories about our people, stories about um, travel inspiration, because there's so much pent up demand. And we think that this revenge spending is going to come back in full force, hopefully next summer as this vaccine um, continues to be distributed. So hold on, Molly, real quick. Neck, did you just say this coming summer? summer? Okay, so you, <laughs> I just wanted to no, because you know it's funny. I think you're making an interesting point. I think all of us, somewhere in the summer of last year, said, Oh man, like the ones that were really being honest were like, Oh, we're gonna come back next summer. This is wow. Oh my god, I thought it was gonna be two weeks. I would argue that, and I, I have empathy and compassion for this. There's some realization of like, Wait a minute, we're not gonna be as back to normal like 2019, even this summer. And that actually gets me to the next point. Do you have any um, insights? Do you believe that in 24 months, well, let's say we're vaccinated out, we're kind of over the hump. Is it your anticipation that a high percentage of the people on the plane are gonna wear masks even when we're back to normal? Do we get Chinafication out? Like, do you believe that the US from your perspective, like I have been really thinking about this. I'm like, wow, will I ever take a flight again in my life where there's nobody wearing a mask? And my answer to myself was no. And not only no, I'm like, man, I bet you it's 25% of the, fl the flight is gonna be there. Thoughts on that? Yeah, no, Gary, I mean, it's hard to say, right? I think we're gonna be seeing mask um, compliance for a while, even through the vaccine, we know it's important beyond, um, even as we continue to vaccinate the country, um, you know, we know from guidance from Mayo Clinic and our partners that masks are an essential piece of kind of stopping the spread. So I think they're gonna be here for a while in terms of how long they're gonna be with us. I can't really speculate, but I agree with you. I do think there's gonna be percentages of people that just feel more comfortable when they travel. And it's not even, even past the pandemic, It's it's, the person sneezing across the way from you and that mask gives you some protection. So yeah, as to what level, I don't know, but I, I think there will be something that will carry through. New platforms. I, I think I'm excited to ask people things, things that are starting to brew in your head of like emerging media platforms, because I think everybody who's watching, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and Fortune 50s, let alone Fortune 500s, can get value out of this question. Any new platforms or ones that, they don't have to be new, but they've crossed over for you. Let's say OTT, you're like, oh wow, I'm gonna take some of my TV money. Your, your Turner, former <laughs> executive, like you understand that that landscape. Oh, I see some real value in the targeting of OTT or I'm genuinely excited about the passive consumption of voice. So this Spotify ad product, anything in your mind as a lead strategist to where the media planning goes, anything, anything starting to brew? Yeah, you know, we're looking at a lot of different things, you know, again, really understanding where our audiences are and how we can deliver against it. You know, I think there's a lot of interesting things going on in the podcast space um, as people have more time and are, are staying at home and kind of consuming um, that type of content. I do agree. I think streaming, we have seen huge shifts um, in the ways people are consuming media as people are home longer, their viewing habits are changing. So how do we capture that attentive audience? Uh, you know, I think think um, I think, as Andrew was saying, I do think out of home is interesting. Um, you can do a lot more with it um, than we used to be able to. And we look at it not only on the paid assets, but how are we using our own assets um, and our earned placements in a different way so that we're really using them to educate along the entire travel journey? Because we've got, you know, we're really lucky. Once we get you in the plane, we have a great in-flight video, um, you know, connect it cabin is kind of our vision. And so how how can we make that inside the cabin feeling um, feel like your living room? And there's opportunity there to kind of talk to our loyal um, and current customers and, uh, and reinforce our messaging and our branding and our values. So um, we're kind of thinking about it through the entire travel journey. Um, and I think there's a lot of interesting things out there and then new ways to connect, right? So moving beyond your traditional just um, 
uh, straight spot? And how do we create more interactive ways um, for our for our customers to kind of interact with us? And we've been doing a lot in social um, around gaming and questions and quizzes, as well as kind of asking the ex experts. So we open up so that people could ask the questions that are on their mind and we get the right experts um, to answer them. So playing around with Instagram stories. And so it just, there's a lot of, um, a lot of opportunity for creativity, I think, within media for next year. And um, I know there's need to continue to be agile and be able to move as budgets change and we're figuring out what this world looks like and, and travelers kind of expand or collapse, hopefully more expand. Um, but having that that creativity, I think, is going to be key to helping us continue to break through. And so, um, you know, we're, we're really awesome. looking at different ways that it's a two-way conversation. I love that, Mal. We're out of time. Have a great year. Good luck. I know it's a challenging one, but we're excited to see what you come up with. Great, Gary. Thanks so much. Hope to see you on a flight soon. You will. <laughs>